And that's why I'm saying at the same time, it's two different events for the same thing. Okay. So it's at the same time. It's a little confusing the way it, it words it. That's why I said same die, same time. So not mutually exclusive because they can happen at the same time. You can have a male student who is a nursing major. Okay, can this happen at the same time to the same person? You can randomly select a blood donor with type O and their blood donor is female. So is it mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? Not mutually. It is not mutually exclusive because you can have a female with zero blood type. Or O blood type. Type O. <laughs> so basically what it's saying is if your double dip is zero, then it's disjoint or mutually exclusive. I can't spell that word, but you are. <laughs> if the double dip is zero, is zero. And it's not mutually exclusive if you have a double dip. Which we've been doing them, I just haven't been calling it mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive. What does that say if double, double dip? If double dip is zero and if double dip is not zero. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a, a um, now we've already talked about these. What were complementary events? What were complementary events? If it was 40% chance it was going to rain, what was the complement? 60%. So either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. Either it's going to rain or it's not rain. So the complement, this is the complement. The complement and the not complement have to equal one. So if it's 0.4 that it's going to rain, then it's 0.6 that it's not going to rain because they have to equal one. And remember the complement is the not. Remember we did one minus to get the complement? Remember that? We just did that on Monday. Oh, yes. The complement was the not. Mm -hmm. This was the not. So if it was a 60% chance of rain, then the not rain was going to be 40%. That is the complement. So this is going back to make sure you remember the complements. So this says if 26% answered yes, what answered other than yes? 74%. Yay. Because if it's percentage, 26% plus 74% equals 100%. Or 0.26 plus 0.74 equals 1. Yay. So, if 80.3% of American Airlines arrive on time, what is the probability that they do not arrive on time? So, the not is going to be 100% minus the was or the is. So, we're going to do 100 minus 80.3. Nineteen point seven percent. The is plus the is not is going to equal one or a hundred percent. Now this one is not in terms of percents. So what do they add up to be? One. So how am I going to get the um? So point three three zero is how often they travel. So um, where n is never, what is the value of n not? How am I going to get that? How am I going to get it? One minus, one minus point three three zero. Point six seven. P of I is this. How do I get P of I not? 
1 minus 0 0.00888. What is it going to be? 0.99112. So when you're doing knots, the knots plus the is is, is going to equal 1 or 100 percent according to whether you have the decimal or the not decimal. Are we good? We did that last time. We just keep bringing stuff up to make sure that you understand it. All right. Independent and dependent. If you are an independent person, an independent person does not rely on anyone. A dependent person depends on someone. So an independent thing would be like if I flipped a coin and rolled a die. Do you agree my coin answer and my die answer have nothing to do with each other? What I flip on that coin and what I roll on that die have nothing to do with each other. Those are independent of each other. What I get on this answer has nothing to do with what I get on this answer. They are independent. I am an independent woman. I have nothing to do with what anybody else says. That is independent. Dependent would be like if I told everyone in the class to pick a straw and keep it. And the smallest straw gets an A. So if I walk around holding these straws and I say, okay, everybody pick a straw. Well, if Bryant picks first, his pick is going to determine what's left over for everybody else to pick. So when it gets back to Allie, she may be the last one to pick. She's screwed because of every, what everybody else picked. So what everybody else picked depends on what's left over for her. So that would be a dependent problem. Can you use a different example? Um, if I have a deck of cards, if I pull a card out, and I say, okay, the one that gets the ace of hearts, they're going to win $100. Okay? So I walk around with the deck of cards, and the ace of hearts is going to win $100. So I walk around, and I give Sarah, she chooses. Well, if she chooses the ace of hearts, y'all are all screwed. She's going to pick the card, and she's going to keep it. So that's one less card that she has to pick from, and that's one less card that you have to pick from, and then she now has 25 cards to pick from and she has he has 24 cards to pick from so the deck is getting smaller and smaller so the last person only has one card to pick from so if you're the first person to pick from you have more to choose from but if you're the last person to pick from you only have one to pick from so what what yeah what what the person before you picks out depends on what's left over now, what would be different was if I said, choose a card, look at it, and put it back in the card. Then you have the same chances as what Sarah had. That would be independent because you looked at it, you put it back in, and she had 52 cards, you have 52 cards. You look at yours, Linda has 52 cards. You look at yours, Jose has 52 cards. But if Sarah picked one out and then keeps it, you have 51 cards. And then Linda has 50 cards, and then Quentin has 49 cards, and then John has 48 cards. That would be dependent because you have less cards to choose from. So we want to know, and so we're going to do some examples. Are they independent? Do they not have anything to do with each other? Or are they dependent? What the first person answers depends on what's left over. Selecting a king from a standard deck of cards, replacing it, and then selecting a queen. Independent, right? Independent or dependent? Independent. Yeah. That is independent because you're replacing it. So everybody has the same cards to pick from. Everybody will have 52 cards. A father having hazel eyes and a daughter having hazel eyes. That is dependent because we talked about the daddy and the mama. What they have depends on what the kid has. 
So if both parents have brown eyes, your kid's probably not going to have blue eyes or green eyes or whatever. So what the mom and daddy have depends on what the baby's going to have. Returning a rented movie after the due date and receiving a late fee. Dependent. That is dependent because you had the movie and you kept it late. So that depends. That's what causes you to get a late fee. Not putting money in a parking meter and getting a park it, parking ticket. Dependent. It's kind of like a cause and effect. That's what caused that to happen. Rolling a six-sided die and then rolling the die a second time so that the sum of the two rolls is five. Independent because you took it back and rolled it again, yes. correct? This is independent because each die does not um, affect the other die. So me rolling the first die and getting a three has nothing to do with rolling the second die and getting a two. A ball is selected from a bin of balls numbered one through 52. It is replaced and then a second ball is selected from the bin. That is independent. Now, if I would have kept the ball, that would have been dependent. All right. Um, this is, talk, is talking about the probability of B given that A occur. The probability of B given that A occur. If events A and B are independent, meaning they have nothing to do with each other, then the probability of B given that A occur is going to be the probability of B. We'll go through it. Selecting a king from a standard deck of cards, not replacing it, and then selecting a queen. So, selecting a king, hold on, I'll come over here. Not replacing it would be dependent. Yeah. So we're not replacing it, which means it's independent. Oh, okay. Okay, so. Oh, what do we want to know? Oh, we're just telling if they're independent or dependent. That's all we're doing. Determine whether the events are independent or dependent. Tossing a coin and getting a head, then rolling a six-sided die and obtaining a six. Independent. Independent. Driving 85 miles an hour and then getting in a car accident. Dependent. Dependent. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hold on. Not replacing it. That one's dependent. Not replacing it. I get, I read in my brain replacing it. All right. Now let's do. Let me do an easy example before I do the ones that are up there because I don't want you to freak out on me. Let's do, um, let's say I have 10 cards, um, hold on. maybe I can do this one without freaking out now. selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. The first card is not replaced before the second card is selected. Find the probability of selecting a heart and then selecting a club. So we're selecting two cards. The probability of the first card and the probability of the second card. Okay, two different selections. Over here. So we are doing the prop. The probability of the first card and the probability of the second card. So my first card is a heart. So what makes me happy 
is a heart over the toe. How many hearts are in a deck of cards? And remember, on the test, I will give you a deck of cards. I will give you a deck of cards so that you can see. For those of you who are not familiar. It's only two cards. There's 52 total cards in a deck. Okay? Let me put this out here so we can look at it real quick. Yes, you're correct. Let me move this down so we can talk about, because you're going to be asked a lot of questions about this. There are 52 total cards. There are 13 clubs. There are 13 spades. There are 13 hearts. And there are 13 diamonds. And if we add those up, that makes 26 that are black. And that makes 26 that are red. So that kind of gives you the breakdown. So there's 52 total cards. We got this downstairs when you test. Yeah, you do have this downstairs when you test. There's 52 total cards and there's four suits. So if you do 52 divided by four, that gives you 13 of each. So 13 clubs, 13 spades, 13 hearts, 13 diamonds. Half of them are red. So 52 cut in half is 26. And half of them are black. Okay? Now, the question says, how many are hearts? 13. Okay? So there's 13 hearts. 13 hearts out of how many? 52. Now, it says that we pick a card and it's not replaced. So that means we pick a card, any heart, and we pick it and we put it in our pocket. So now when we go to pick the second card, how many cards are now left to choose from? 51. And this time we're selecting a club. How many clubs are there? Thirteen. So to get my answer, I would multiply both of those. I would do thirteen times fifty-two, and then I mean thirteen over fifty-two times thirteen over fifty-one. And if I wanted a fraction, that would be my fraction. Now, that is if I say no replacement. What if I would have taken the same problem, I'm going to do this one several different ways just to make sure you understand. Let me move him up here. Let me move him down here. And what if I would have said is replaced? What if I do the same exact problem and this time I say is replaced. The bottom stays the same. So for my first card and my second card, the first card I want a heart, the second card I wanted a club. Okay. So my first card is still 13 out of 52. Mm -hmm. So I look at this card and then I put it back in the stack. So the bottom is still going to be 52 and the top card is still going to be 13. Yay. Mm -hmm. And then I go to my calculator and I do 13 over 52 times 13 over 52. Okay. Now, let me take this again. Copy. And then whatever you multiply that out to be in your calculator is going to be the answer. Now, what if I do, what is the probability of picking a heart, not replacing, and picking another heart? So, 13 over 52, and then not replacing it. Not replacing it, which means you put it in your pocket. 12 over 51, or 2 
No, 13 over 51. Um, Kiana, very good. It's not replaced. You picked a heart. Mm -hmm. You put it in your pocket. So do we agree we now have 51 cards to choose from total? Right. But how many hearts do we now have to choose from? Now we have 12. Now we have 12. On the last problem, we had a heart to begin with, but then we went to a different suit. We went to a club. We went to, let's say, a club. So we had a heart in our pocket, but then we went to a club. That's why we had 13. But we did a heart and a heart. That's why this went down to 12. You see the difference? Yeah. Now, what if I said, so for this one, it, so what if I said, same problem, what if I said I want a heart, I'm going to replace it, and I want another heart? Thirteen over fifty-two for the first heart. I get my heart, I look at it, but then I put it back in the stack. So it would be 13 over 52 again. See the difference between replacing and not replacing? Does that make sense? Okay, let's look at this one. Well, let me go to this one first and then... Let me go to this one. A coin is tossed and a die is rolled. Find the probability of tossing a tail and rolling a number greater than two. So we're doing two things. We're doing the coin and we're doing the um, die. So if you're doing two things, that means you're multiplying two probabilities. Just like picking a card and picking a card. So for my coin, I want to know what makes me happy over total. So what makes me happy is tossing a tail. How many tails are there? One. And how many sides are there? Two. Now, on my die, I want to know what makes me happy over total. How many sides are on my die? One. Six. 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 Just a normal die has six sides. Okay. It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, how many of those sides make me happy? A number greater than two. So three, four, five, six. Four sides make me happy. Now this time we didn't have to worry about replacing or not because they're independent. They have nothing to do with each other. Okay? So I go to my calculator and I do one half times four six. There's the probability. Now on these, will you pretty much just ask for what I mean, uh, in the In my math lab, it'll say, give me a decimal to the nearest hundredth, or it'll say simplify. If it says simplify, it wants a fraction. If it says round it to the nearest tenth or whatever, it'll say, it'll give me a decimal. Okay. All right. Let's look at, um, now, this is what I was talking about. With replacement means put it back. Without replacement means keep it in your pocket. Okay? If two orders are selected, find the probability that both are not accurate. So, I want two that are not accurate. So, um, with replacement, so I want the probability that it's not accurate and the probability that it's not accurate. Probability that it's not accurate and the probability that it's not accurate. Okay. So I'm getting two orders. So I'm going to go fast fooding and I want to know what are the chances that I get two orders and they're both screwed up. Okay. So, what is the probability that my first order is not accurate? How do I get that? 
add up. Add up what? Um, all your not, all, all the numbers. All the not accurates, because that's what makes me happy. And then my total. Is this the one we've already done? Is my total 1118? Yeah. Okay. So my total, <coughs> we know, is 1118. That's my total. How many are not accurate? 131. 131. Now, it says with replacement. That means I put it back in. So what is my next fraction going to be? I'm putting the card back in. Same thing. Same thing. Now, if I do without replacement, probability that it's not accurate times the probability that it's not accurate. So it's going to be the 131 over the 1118. But if I do not replace it, that means I keep it out. What is my next fraction going to be? 130. 130 over 1117. Seven. So it drops both of those. Because you kept a not accurate, which is also keeping an order. Just like you kept a heart, which means you kept a card. So to get the answer, you would do this wrapped up times this wrapped up. You would do this wrapped up times this wrapped up. Are we good? Linda? All right, let's see what else I can find. Did that one. All right, let's look at this one. I want to see what y'all can do with A. What can y'all do with A? Just A. Find the probability that both adults think that most Hollywood celebrities are good role models without replacement. I just want to see the decimal. So we're doing the probability of good and the probability of good. We're doing two adults without replacement. So probability of good, probability of good without replacement. That's perfect. Is this right? Hold on. Without replacement. Without replacement. That's perfect. Hold on, let me see what the actual answer is. You said you want a decimal? Yeah. Without replacement. Without replacement. Keep that person out. Perfect. Perfect. What is that number down there? It's a trap ball. Oh, 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 you're good, you're good, you're good. Oh, hold on. What's that bottom number oh, supposed to be? Hold on, change, look at the bottom number up there. Look at the, look at the screen. What's the bottom number supposed to be? In a sample of, uh -huh. that should be your bottom number. Perfect. That bottom number. If you take one out the top, you have to take one out the bottom. <coughs> Is that right? Because we were looking at 
than this. That's it's perfect. Too, That's perfect. What about this? That's two adults. You're choosing two adults. That's the first adult good adult, and that's the second good adult. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah.